Hey folks, Jessica here, back for our fourth discussion of Unite Fight. If you missed out on parts one through three, they're in the description down below in the playlist, so you can check them out all there. Now, we have just entered finals, and a few of the UI elements are going to be a little bit different, so I'll call them out. I'll probably do some tips and tricks also, and I'm going to cover a few miscellaneous topics that people have asked about that I just haven't gone around to, like the bookkeeper for Unite Fight, stuff like that. So. First thing um, people are probably going to ask is, as a crew, and keep in mind, like a lot of these tips are going to be for crews. Uh, what is a like a point total you should aim for? And the answer is simple: it's higher than your opponent's team. You should you should aim for getting enough to beat the enemy team, uh, with enough of a margin that they can't just suddenly surge past you. Uh, that, that seems obvious, but here's the thing. Unite Fight is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So the best piece of advice I can give you is pace yourselves as a crew. You don't want to go super crazy hard on day one and then have half your crew be burnt out by day four and not be able to really go hard if they need to there. So just for reference, um, I'm in a B-tier crew this time. I used to be in like a hard a hardcore A tier crew, but I just, uh, it's so much, it's so much, <laughs> I'm so tired. So I'm just in a friend's crew right now. I think we only have 21 out of 30 members, but you know, it's not a big deal. Let's just shooting for B tier. So um, for reference, uh, let's see, this current match is like 58 million to 48 million. Uh, let me see if I got a screenshot. Yeah, right there, um, above Vera's head. Uh, this is from the last United fight for my previous crew, which was an A-tier hardcore crew. Big point difference. Instead of 58 million, it's 1,839,000,000 versus 1,528,000,000. So, like, it's nine day, um, the effort you're gonna have to put out in the different tiers. And it's not to say that every fight in A-tier is gonna be like that, but certainly, there's going to be more crews that are going that hard. So what I mean by trying to get a gauge on how tough your opponent is, uh, there's a few factors. Biggest one is just pull open your opponent's crew here. And right here on the screen, you can see how many members they have. So they have 20. Uh, normally, that would be an easy win because uh, for harder tiers, you're always going to have a full crew. If you don't, then you're probably not super serious about United Fight. But my crew only has 21, so that's not actually that big of an advantage in this particular case. Uh, what does matter, though, is their average rank is 119. That's actually pretty low. Uh, for contrast, I think one of the matches in A tier pull open the enemy team, and they were like average rank 205 or something. <laughs> you know if that happens, it's going to be a hard time. Uh, so the reason that matters is if the enemy crew is like way, way, way stronger than your crew, like it's 30 members and most of them are active and their average level is higher than your crew by a significant margin, you as a crew are going to have to evaluate how that that is a hard fight and try and determine how hard you're going to have to go or are willing to go to actually try and beat them. Other things that matter, and some of these will seem a little weird, but but there's a reason. Um, if you can garner whether or not the enemy crew is North American or Japanese or any other regional like differences like that, uh, that is super helpful. Because if you're fighting a JP crew, they tend to surge a lot overnight while America is sleeping, just or like this half of the, the continent, the, this half of the world is sleeping, just because of time zone differences. So like, if you went to bed with like, I don't know, if, the, if we were on eighty million, uh, and we went and we went to bed right now, there is a good chance that like, and this enemy team was Japanese. There's a good chance they might be on like a hundred million by the time we wake up, and then we would be behind and have to catch up. If, however, they're American crew, then they probably won't surge that much overnight. Uh, it can be hard to figure that out because some American crews pretend they're Japanese crews for like to throw people off like that. Mind games, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, th that's a big factor. Now, how much of a lead you want to get again depends on like 
the pace and like the power difference between your crews. If you guys are pretty close, you're gonna want to try and establish enough of a lead that you think you can comfortably like comfortably react if they start catching up. So like if we were to stop on like 60 million, even though we would technically be ahead right now for the night, they could easily catch up and and surpass that number without us really having a good amount of time to react. Um, now if we were on a hundred million or something, and like you know most of the hardcore crew members kind of logged off. Uh, we would see we have time to see them catching up. So like if they hit like 60 million, it's like okay, maybe they're trying. And then if they hit 70 million, it's like okay, yeah, I think they're trying. 80 million, they're definitely trying. Let's all go in and try and you know counter push. Like th that's kind of like the tension in the gameplay of uh, United Fight as a crew. Uh, and I, I keep on talking about as a crew. Ideally, if you're serious about United Fight, you should be in a crew that talks to each other, that like, communicates each other through Discord, whatnot. If you're just trying to get minimum badges that you can from each of the rounds and don't super care, then like that's not as important. But ideally, if you're actually trying to win these things, this kind of information is super important, that kind of communication is super important. Other things I did not mention yet, there are true officer skills. These are attack and HP buffs that your true officers can can set up. Usually, you're, as a crew, you guys are going to want to time these for um, either like during strike time or or when you have a good number of players on to take advantage of it. These crew buffs can be a pretty big deal, and you have a limited number of them, so you got to use them strategically. I mentioned strike time. Strike time is important. Uh, and also, it's another way you can kind of predict when you're going to surge and when the opponent's going to surge. Um, most teams will specifically change their strike times to take place during periods where most of their members are active so they can take advantage of strike time to surge as far as possible. And again, that's just the coordination you're going to have to do if, you, if you're pretty interested in winning these things. So I think I covered the other stuff. You have top members, rankings, all that kind of thing. Uh, do keep in mind that you can see your crew's totals and honors. So like, if you're afraid of getting caught super slacking, then don't super slack. <laughs> Just throwing that one out there. Now, let's see. Uh, I will talk about the new Nightmare fight. So as I mentioned before, uh, more Nightmare fights are going to unlock as the week progresses. Nightmare 95 is right now, and then I think 100 is the final one, which I think unlocks in a couple rounds. We'll see. Uh, this is whoops. This is worth a lot more uh, honor per meet, um, but it does take 10 instead of 5, and the final round will take 20. So that's why you want to build those meat stockpiles. I'm actually kind of low on meat. Okay, so um, before I talk about the actual fight, let's cover a thing that some people have asked me. Uh, and that is, what is the bookmaker and how do I bet? There's going to be different philosophies on betting, but when you click on the bookmaker, it brings this up. And based on your cruise performance, you're going to get betting cards. So now I have 34 betting cards. Let's see. Betting ends in about three hours. So there's a few ways to place a bet. And what you're betting on is who wins out of these regions, north, west, east, south. Um, and they're just the totals for players, for crews that are placed in those regions. Uh, and you can bet, like, I think North is going to be highest. And, like, you'll, if, you, if you're right, by the end of this, and these values fluctuate, you'll get 95 crystals per betting ticket if you win. These numbers do fluctuate, though, so you might not get that exact number. Now, you can do, that's a single bet. What I usually recommend doing is a triple bet which is a little bit trickier, but now you're betting on the exact order you think the the regions will come in in. So like, for example, like, let's see, this one is, I think north will be top, east will be second, south will be third, west will be last. And because that is unlikely to happen based on current point totals, like if, the, if this were to end right now, I would get 1,144 crystals per ticket. So I would get like 30,000 something tickets, or sorry, crystals. Uh, that's a lot. 
And you know, I have actually won a couple of those bets before. I think the most I've ever pulled out of one bet period was about 35,000 crystals. It was, it was nice, <laughs> really helped out the spark fund. Now, how do you predict? <laughs> uh, you need a lot of data. You can't just like eyeball this right now and be like, you know, I think arbitrary combination is gonna win. Cause it's not like that. You've got to nail it exactly for it to count as a win. So there is a resource that you can use for this. I'll put the link to this down below. There we go. This is a, a spreadsheet, the Red Blue Fantasy Point Tallies, and it is updated by a bunch of lovely people. And as you can see, it shows the point totals in 20 minute increble, or inc increbles. What is an increble? Intervals. <laughs> I was trying to say increments and intervals at the same time, and it became increments. It's a new word. I'm using it. And like this gives you an idea of like like how fast each side's progressing. And based on that, you can kind of predict the order you think they're going to come in. Um, there's a lot of data here. Like there's like a rating based on their speed, and then you can also just go to final prediction uh, based on a lot of math. This is the order they'll think they think it will come in um, at the end. So like they think that South will be South will be first, uh, East will be second, North will be third, West will be last. So let me close this. Ba -ba -ba. So let's see what bet that would be. That would be South, East, North. So South, East, North is this one. And you can see that because the point totals um, do kind of actually match that prediction right now, like that prediction is partly based on what the score is right now, that's actually like the lowest payout you'll get out of all these possible ones. You could bet on the long shot, but it's a long shot for a reason. <laughs> and chances are you're just wasting tickets. What I usually do is I wait until like maybe like 20 minutes before betting ends, an hour, whatever, and I just bet on what is predicted to win at that time. And you know, you're not gonna get as many crystals, uh, but if you're right, you will at least get some crystals for your tickets. And I recommend that over just yellowing it. <laughs> it's also not a guarantee that things will actually end that way because it does frequently happen that like things are close enough that they will flip in the period after betting. Yeah, like it's never a sure thing, so never treat betting like a sure thing. Because it's betting, it's gambling. I don't need to tell you that, right? Uh, but yeah, I will... You know what, for the sake of, uh, sake of this discussion, I'm going to bet on this. I'm going to go 30 tickets into... God, the payout's so low. <laughs> I'm going to bet 30 tickets on this and we'll see how it goes. Normally I would wait longer, but I also kind of want to take a nap, so we're not going to. All right, now the actual fight. So when you start getting in these harder ones, I showed you the level 91. It was no big deal for my team. When you get in the harder ones, you kind of want to be more cognizant of one, what the boss is going to do, and two, what you have in your um, toolbox in terms of team members and classes and skills to counteract that boss. So hang on, let me pull it open real fast. So right now, I try to solo these bosses for the most part because if every member of your crew is able to solo the nightmares, uh, that's going to be the fastest way as a crew to a crew honor. Um, but if you are not like in a position where you can solo a boss, that's totally fine. Just team up for your crew. I, I know a lot of crews will have people pair off for like strike time, that kind of thing, just to make sure everybody gets through the bosses in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, but yeah, since I try solo, I will cover. I need to cover things like defense down, attack down, um, and I'm using Warlock for that because I can hit him with Dark Haze, so attack down for foes, and death down, and poison, and blind. Blind is actually kind of helpful, it saves you some hits. This is basically like the better version of Miserable Mist. This is the Warlock unique version. Uh, Chaser gives everybody a echo, a bonus elemental damage, super helpful just for extra output. And then Splitting Spirit, 
I use this because I'm running Amity Dark, so it lowers my HP to charge up my charge bar. Normally, I don't like Ooging a ton while I'm dark, but I am using Parazonium, and this is uh, Orchid's um, grand weapon. This thing gives you a huge boost in multi-attack to your whole team, plus it gives the whole team a dark echo. It is pretty hard to argue that any other weapon is better as a main hand than Parazonium. Um, if you know a better weapon than Parazonium for main hand, let me know, because I am fairly certain this is the best main hand for Dark right now. So all those things point towards use Warlock. As far as team setup, I'm using Dark Angel Olivia because at this point it's also when boss attacks start getting rough enough that you kind of want to have to some way of interfering with them, otherwise you're going to get fucking plastered. Um, she's also got an Echo, and she's just really good for that purpose. Uh, Dark Sean, she's got a good self buff, and she can def down the boss for more defense reduction. Six because he's six and just hits like a truck and can survive forever. And then the back row, um, normally I run Zoe up front. My kitty's whining. It's not dinner time, son. Uh, so, yeah. oh, little boy. I want to cut that, but my cat's super cute, so I'm just going to put up with this. Uh, so, normally I put um, Summer Zoe in the front so I can conjunction right off the bat to activate Amity. Um, by the way, if you want to know the difference between full HP and low HP, in Amity, this is a new feature they added. You can actually like tweak this. So like this is assuming your your main character has one percent HP. That went from sixty thousand to two hundred and sixty thousand. So that that's the power of Amity, and that's what uh, Summer Zoe allows you to exploit. But because these fights are a little bit tougher, and I can't just steamroll the thing with like a few turns of Summer Zoe, I'm actually have Summer Zoe in the back row because once a character dies, which is usually around 50% on this boss, I can pull out the Summer Zoe, conjunction, and then immune the 50% trigger, and then just go ham all the way down to 0%. So like that's the kind of mindset you want to be in, uh, and that's going to depend on what team you have, what grid you have. Just play the fights and try and figure out like what is the best setup to handle all the boss's abilities. You don't necessarily need to have a guide open that tells you step by step what the boss does. It's just kind of an eyeballing it thing. And then I've got Narmaya in the last slot because she also does a shit ton of damage uh, if the boss happens to be in break, that kind of thing. Other choices, let's just talk about this real quick. And the more options you have, the better, but you know, not everyone's gonna have all the dark SSRs, so like, you work with what you got. Uh, Beatrice is actually decent here because uh, she hits like a truck. Everyone in Dark's going to hit like a truck, don't worry about that too much. Uh, but she has an attack down uh, and she can give herself like a one hit immunity on her Oogie. So she's pretty survivable and she can Dark, and, sorry, she can attack down and light attack down the enemy boss, so they'll do less damage. Um, Dark Zeta is pretty good because she reduces, she's got a bunch of interactions with Burn, which she can reflect. Uh, Orchid, super good. Um, she's got, she's got like buffs for the team and she hits super hard and she's got a damage cut, I believe. Uh, and those are just kind of things you want to weigh. You use the new Eustis if you have him. Uh, he's a pretty good uh, buffer and does good amount of damage. Uh, Wolf and Rene, uh, they are really strong as a, um, they're an offensive unit, but they can also soak hits and 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 not like die immediately, uh, because they they have a lot of ways to heal themselves and they have higher hostility than other units. So, you know, just look at all your options and your normal team might not be the best team for these. It just depends on how your team reaches the different parts of the fight, the different triggers, basically. So let's go back. And you know, I'm probably going to forget something, forget to mention something, so there might be a fifth video. There's definitely going to be a final rally video. Uh, so expect a little bit more in the series. But now I'm just going to go through the boss. I'll just show you what the gameplay for the boss looks like. I'm going to cut here, 
in case the gameplay looks super bad. And then I'll put in the clip later uh, that doesn't look super bad. So I'll be right back and we will do this boss. Okay, here we are. Nightmare um, 95. And I'm going to use the Bahamut Summon. And we'll use that team I just showed you. So let's dive right in. Turn on audio so this is more interesting for you. I'll turn on charge text also. Just I usually turn all that stuff off because like it just slows everything down. I don't really need the audio, but yeah, this will be more fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a splitting soul, which will reduce Vegeta's health to not quite enough to get to Ugi. I, if I can increase her HP a little bit, I believe it would get her to Ugi, but I'll worry about that later. She is, like, that does trigger her MD to that, so she'll do a lot of damage. And use her Aether Blast. Dark Angel Olivia, I'm gonna go use her uh, Nevermore buff to just buff her up. And I will use, if you never used Dark Angel Olivia before, Sterling C inflicts Twilight Terror. Twilight Terror is actually an incredibly powerful buff. Now let me just cast it. While this is up, she's not gonna. The boss is not gonna build charge diamonds, so it's like fear. But the boss also can't use special attacks or charge attacks. It in fact will delay the boss's triggers until it wears off. It's a super, super powerful attack. And I'm not gonna use this skill because this skill is a delay, and the boss is only charge diamonds. Plus, if I Oogie first, it double delays, so it's real nice. Jean, activate incision. Give her a huge stat buff, and then I'll use her death down for further death down into the boss. Pop all of Six's cooldowns. And really, Six is the kind of character where you want to use all his cooldowns every time they're available. Do Bahamut. Then I'll beat this guy up a little bit and see where we are. Okay. Not building charge diamonds because they're twilight terrored. I'm gonna go ahead and attack again. This will trigger Parazonium's uh, Ugi. Which get everybody multi attack up and another echo on top of Chaser. Oh, those numbers. Things are pretty chill so far. Six's cooldown came up. Still not building charge diamonds. Let's go again. So now if I hit them with uh, her delay, it's going to double delay, in addition to being a double nuke, which I think hits for like, it hits for like 2 million, it's a lot, when it doubles up. This is 5 star 6's Ugi, it's actually one of my favorites, it's super anime, yeah, Naruto runs at them, pulls out his stand. So, I believe there's a 75% trigger, but I don't think we're going to quite reach this time. I might eat those words, but we will see if we do. I think it's going to be shy of 75%. Yeah, it is. Okay, now there's going to be a 75% trigger when I get there. So, I'm actually going to go Olivia this. Still not activating um, Darkshawn's uh, immunity because that puts a clock on her, which is totally worth it, but right now I don't think she's going to take enough damage for it to be an issue. And now, yeah, there is a 75% trigger, I remember that right, because I alleviated it, didn't do any damage. Let's reapply our Dark Haze. Reapply our Death Down. And I want to say she's not quite low enough that I need to activate her immunity yet. I might regret that. I'm going to go ahead and sleep the boss, though, if this lands. It doesn't always land. Oh, it did land. Nice. So that will sleep him for a turn. Okay. I think now I'm going to activate her immunity. So while this is up, she cannot die, basically. But if she's not at full health, by the end of this, which is in five turns, she will die. So um, you can put you can potion her to like get to two potions will fill her up and take that off. Which is usually what I do, but we'll see. 
I do ideally want someone to die by the time this thing gets near 50 because there is a 50% trigger and I want to pull up Zoe in conjunction into the 50% trigger which will negate the 50% trigger's damage. In that respect, I might have wanted to actually let Jean die. We will see though. Alright, we apply Chaser for the big damage. I, and you might notice I haven't used um, Olivia's thing yet. You could use it for damage, but I'm just saving it for the actual delay effect. See, like, Darshan would have died there if she didn't have any of you. Do I want to risk Vegeta dying? I'm gonna go ahead and potion Vegeta. So I can split his soul and go all the way to full charge bar. Hit him with a little Twilight Terror. Which will actually do. I believe that will delay the 50% trigger. Which will give Jean some time to die out. I know that sounds terrible, but I do want Jean to switch out for um, Zoe by tensing hits 50%. This Oh, by the way, Darshan's also here because she has a dark attack health buff. She's just so good. <laughs> Darshan is, has always been really good. Ooh. So Twilight Terror is still up. I believe we'll wear off next turn. Sean, how many turns do you have left on your immunity? You have two turns left. I don't want you to die, Sean. Could you, like, I, I know that sounds bad, but could you just like fall over dead, please? Because I need Zoe in here. It's fine, up. Go ahead and Bahamut again. Okay, so Jean is still alive. The 50% trigger didn't happen because I Twilight Terrored it. Um, Jean is actually going to die this turn, so a little bit weird timing, but you know, we'll just go with what we got. Um, just kind of roll the punches. Six's super ability is active, is going to be active now. This will make him dodge every single attack, which is fine, which is really good. <laughs> just fine. And he'll attack twice for four turns. Super good. And I think that trigger is actually going to come out this time, so I'm going to go ahead and um, Athena to reduce the trigger's damage, and I'm going to double pot. You have a fucking million of these support pots. It's fine. And I'm going to just hit a regular pot to pull off Jean's thing. I know I did say I wanted her to die, but now that we're past that point, it'd be fine. It'd be fine if she lived. She might still die. Someone still might die because this 50% trigger hits her up. Yep, there's a 50% trigger that got delayed by Twilight Terror. And the Athena ended up blocking a lot of its damage. So yeah, if you just watch 6, he just fucking ruins this guy. You know, we're just gonna use the delay for damage. He actually hasn't gained any charge. See, like 2.4 million from one nuke. It's a lot. <laughs> if you watch 6 though, notice that 6 is attacking twice per turn. That is the power of his ultimate ability. And he's gonna triple attack here and then Ugi. So to, or he's gonna Ugi and then triple attack. So you can like actually get, weave an Ugi in there also. Plus his Ugi puts fear on the boss. That was one of the buffs he got. Not fear fear, but it basically stops an action from the boss. Look at that damage! Six he hit so hard, my man! Other world cataclysm! Okay, killed Olivia, that's totally fine. Zoe's coming out now, conjunction up the team. About to go super ham. Activate Six's abilities. And now we're gonna Shiva this turn. This is gonna be some juicy damage. Oh, get ready for the numbers! Oh, 
autoing for 1.4 million. And then here comes six, autoing for all the damage in the world. And now the boss is almost dead. And now the boss is pretty much dead. Uh, 16 million gets, I hit him with a stand. So that is Nightmare 25. And now t let's take a look at the points for this, because it's actually a dramatic increase. Also, you get a rank point and an XP bonus uh, for doing it solo. It's not that big a deal, but it is a nice little bonus, because those bonuses are actually bigger than the amount you would normally get for doing the whole thing. Uh, just a small perk if you can solo these. So this is 913,000, it's almost a million. If I remember correctly, yeah, if I remember correctly, the Nightmare 90 was only like 260,000. So this is like, this is almost, this is almost four times as much. Um, it's less, than, it's like 3.3 3 times as much or something. It's a lot more though. And it only costs twice as much meat. So you can see the higher you can go with these, the more efficient it's going to be in terms of meat. And it's also going to be a more efficient use of your time because if you're high enough to solo these, um, you're probably not making the most of uh, the potential amount of damage you could do um, using your team. Like, because like certain characters, like Six, for example, takes a little bit of time to ramp up, and in the early, the, the quicker fights he gets, isn't getting time to ramp up because it takes the fights are so fast. All right, so that these guys are maintaining, they're keeping peace with us. So just for example, I would be very uncomfortable if people in my crew started logging off, uh, logging off, if they started going to bed and stuff, and we didn't have at least a thirty thousand, a thirty million point lead. This ten million point lead could evaporate in like a matter of like ten minutes. So um, we'll see. I will update you next vid on how my crew did. But yeah, that's it for this time. If you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can check out my Twitter, you can check out my Patreon, they're all in the description down below. Super appreciate that. And I will be back with another video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do another one specifically on United Fight before the final rally, but um, I might. Just keep your eyes out, uh, just sub, and you'll know when my videos come up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, catch you guys next time, love you, bye, good luck with your 89 fights, kill the shit out of your enemies, bye.